Hello and welcome to the 21st video in this series of videos programming chess engine in C. This video is going to contain no code, it's just going to contain a summary of where we are and where we're going. So if it, you're not really bothered then feel free to move on to the next video. But just to check where we are so I can give some kind of idea of what we're doing. We have our board representation done, we can read in an FEN string and we can set up a position or spot you on as I wrote there. So we can do that now. So what's the next step or what's to come? We need to start now building up the capability in our program to actually make and unmake moves on the board. And the first thing we need to be prepared to, to prepare to do this is we need to create something called a square attacked function. And this function will basically say is on the board in the current position square square so say for example e4 attacked by side so say black and this square attacked is used for example to say are we in check so you would say is the square that the white king is atta on attacked by black for example and we'll need to use this inside our make move function and also inside our move generator when we're generating castling moves so that's the first thing we'll need to do before we do anything else the next thing we'll need to do is set up the move structure and what I mean by that is two things one is we'll have an actual structure where we'll contain a move and then another integer for the score but the move itself because we've got 31 uh, bits in the signed integer available we'll be using all of those bits to store our from square our two square piece captured the type of move whether it's a promotion whether it's a castle move will all be stored inside one integer and we'll retrieve the various values we need by shifting bits left and right which you'll see in the video when we get round to it. Once we've done that we can start writing our do and undo functions which make a move and undo a move and once we finish that these three items here then we sort of hit a milestone I would say and we can do something called perf testing and what perf testing is is it tests the how uh, the implementation of your move generator basically whether it's bug free or not and the way that works is we have a file like this one here full of different positions and we'll walk through each position in this file and you can see here that after the semicolon of the position description we've got d1 and a number d2 and a number d3 and so on and basically these are depths and this is saying in if you play every legal move to one dip move deep in this position there should be 15 moves played. It's then saying if you play to depth 2 which means say white is to move here so white moves and then you have every reply by black for every one of these 15 moves we should have 66 leaf positions that means not including the first move but just the, the moves ending at this depth in the tree and so on. I'll explain that in a little a little better when we get around to doing the perf function. Basically this goes step 3, depth 4, depth 5 and up to depth 6 in this file and you can see for example in this position here, the second one, which is a very complicated position that contains most features which will catch bugs, you can see that we actually end up already by depth 5 searching 193 million leaf positions and depth 6 we're already up to the 8 billion leaf positions for searching. And the idea is, is you run through this file and search to a specified depth and you should get exactly the same numbers as are shown in this file here. I'll show when we come to do the perf where you can download this file. Um, and that's generally seen as good proof that your move generator is completely bug free because it's essential in the program that these tests complete. And once we've done that actually, we've then got to implement two things. We'll do a skeleton evaluation function at first just so that the program can evaluate material and maybe try and favor putting its pieces in the center of the board and then we can finally move on to implementing the search function and then we'll be very close to the program actually being able to play a proper game and then finally we can connect to a GUI arena and actually play against our engine using one of the free GUIs available. Okay so that's it for this video, that's just a quick explanation of where we are and where we're going and like I said to come is the 
do an undo, square attacked, move structure, and then the perf testing, which is the real biggie. And one more thing I just want to add on the end of this is I haven't written all of this code for this engine already prepared. Um, I'm writing everything as I go along with these videos and um, because I prefer, well, it's a better way to do it like that. I've written quite a few engines myself in the past. And as I said at the start of this series, this engine isn't meant to be the perf a perfect example of programming or even a perfect example of an engine. It's a start of how to get going and the quickest way I can think of. Hence, it's not structured as maybe a university lecturer would say to structure a C program. So it can, it's going to contain the basic features. It'll still play probably close to master standard at the end. Um, but it's, sure, it's purely here as a demonstration is what I wanted to say. And because I'm coding it as I'm going, there could be a couple of occasions where I suddenly say, oh, there's a big error in one of the functions we've already done and I need to correct it. And usually you find these things when you start doing the perf testing. Okay, thanks very much for listening, paying attention. Back to normal with more code in the next video.